Hey, Psych2Goers. Today's topic is an extremely sensitive one. We will be talking about sexual abuse, exploitation, and suicide. These topics can get quite dark, so consider this a warning for those who struggle with them. The goal of this video is not to make anyone anxious or paranoid about their sexual relationships, but rather to keep people aware, vigilant, and safe when it comes to sexual relationships in the internet age. We'll be talking about the effects of sextortion, how people become vulnerable to it, and what you can do if you find yourself in that situation. Let's get into it. First, let's be clear on what sextortion is. Sextortion is the process of manipulating or threatening someone for sexual favors or by using their sexual activity to extort them. The perpetrator can be a stranger or, more often than not, an existing or ex-partner. Perpetrators often combine other manipulation tactics together to succeed in their sextortion. A simple example would be if someone said to you, send me more nudes or I'll share the ones you already sent me. What to look out for and why you might be targeted. People who use extortion aren't always brazen. Instead, they may employ different manipulation tactics such as love bombing, gaslighting, or even resort to using threats. They might convince you that they love you, care about you, and they think you're the most beautiful person in the world. But as soon as they have what they want, they either ghost you or start using what they have to manipulate you. Everyone knows to be cautious when talking to strangers or sending sexually explicit content. Therefore, they will try everything they can do to break down this cautiousness and hesitation. At first, they may seem really caring, sincere, and reassuring, and make you think that you are the one who is really benefiting from the exchange. This is why sextortion is so difficult to see coming. After all, we all want love, attention, and the thrill of sexual intimacy. So if you think you'd never be targeted, be aware that sextortion can happen to anybody. Whether you're a minor or not, regardless of your gender or sexual orientation, you can still be targeted. The goals of sextortion are vast and often unpredictable. Women are usually targeted by people in their lives like exes, friends, and partners from behavioral demands, such as further sexual favors or a continued relationship. Men, on the other hand, are usually targeted for money. Someone could threaten to expose an affair, strange or embarrassing fetishes, or simply leak nudes for money. We currently live in the most dangerous time for sextortion. With the rise of AI deepfakes, people can be exploited without ever having uploaded or sent anything in the first place. This is made worse when we're living in a time where people are struggling with loneliness after the pandemic and working from home where they have become more open to affectionate advances, which makes them easier to exploit. Not to mention, perpetrators can find sensitive videos and images if you're not careful with keeping your passwords safe or if they're easy to guess. As you can imagine, the stress of being extorted and the pain of being betrayed can be incredibly difficult to deal with, and it can take a major toll on your mental health and well-being. It can make you feel paranoid, anxious about sex, and mistrustful. It's especially scary to navigate because until recently, there wasn't even a name for it. It is an overlooked, almost invisible crime, but there have been far too many suicides linked to sextortion. So we feel it's necessary to point out that it is not a hopeless situation. There are actions you can take. It may seem impossible, especially when the blame often falls onto the victim. The recommended course of action in this situation According to the Internet Watch Foundation, which is a foundation that aims to protect people from sexual abuse over the internet, is to cut off all contact with the manipulator. And this can be extremely scary because of the threats the manipulator may have made. Make sure somebody, whether it's a parent or the police, is made aware of what you're going through. The manipulator will try to make it seem like you're the bad guy, and they'll try to make you think you're unforgivable while separating you from your support systems and the people who can help you. Don't listen to them. If you know who it is that's trying to manipulate you, make that abundantly clear. Collect evidence and proof if you can by taking screenshots. Remember, it is a crime. Over time, consider therapy. It isn't normal to experience that kind of betrayal and stress. 
Talking to a professional can help you open up and trust people in whatever way makes you feel comfortable again. While the legal side of sextortion is still messy, you can and should prioritize your mental health. Don't blame yourself and understand that if you deal with anxiety as a result, it isn't your fault. Sextortion is never the victim's fault. The manipulators that use sextortion know exactly what they're doing and the blame is entirely on them. They know who to prey on and how to prey on them. If you think someone is being a little too affectionate while you're vulnerable or a little too pushy, please stay vigilant. Don't pay anyone and certainly don't send them more sexual material. You are deserving of real love and fulfilling relationships. We hope you never end up in this situation. If you found this video helpful or informative, please leave a like. If you have any other advice to avoid or cope with sextortion, please share it in the comments. Remember to stay safe out there, Psych2Goers. You got this.